So this is just a quick video to talk about some of the challenges that we face when uh, using the ScanSnap IX500 when we're doing a lot of scanning for a high volume bookkeeping office and some of the tips and tricks. So first of all, you need to be using profiles. If you don't using profiles, you're, you're spending about 300 to 400% more time scanning than is required. It's really important to, to use profiles in the ScanSnap software. Uh, we have videos on that, so I'm not gonna go, that, go into that here. Be mindful of the items that are, not, that are not needed in a scan profile. When You don't need to use the maximum DPI when auto resolution is fine when you're, if you're adjusting your settings. Um, never use duplex scanning for a one-sided document. The reason being is that there is a checkbox to take out blank pages. However, if there's a smudge um, or if there's a logo or if there's anything on the uh, other side of, this, of the single page document, uh, the ScanSnap software sees it as a two-page document instead of a one-page document. So that's why you create profiles that are very specific to the types of receipts and invoices that you have. Um, you'll have certain PDFs that might be nine pages long, like uh, maybe a nine-page bank statement or maybe a 15-page vendor invoice, which would be fairly large. Uh, those go in their own, their own separate prof uh, piles because you can't create... Uh, the ScanSnap only takes nine profiles, and we have uh, certain profiles set up for the majority of cases, and it's not very often you have a 17-page vendor invoice. So just some things to keep in mind. Set resolution for automatic for most receipts. Thermal receipts need a slightly higher resolution and contrast due to paper ink characteristics. Um, so you can adjust, uh, well, in our profiles that we give away for free, we've actually made those settings, uh, set them properly. Uh, make sure the scanning software converts all PDFs into searchable PDFs. That's again, that's preset in our uh, in the ScanSnap settings that we make available for download. Uh, minimize the use of handwriting on receipts and bank statements. Um, if if you're going to be actually scanning and using uh, extraction technologies, any sort of uh, smudges, wrinkles, handwriting makes it really hard for the artificial intelligence platform software to extract the data. So. You want to educate your clients to minimize that. <coughs> sort the receipts into categories, um, and then you can subsort. So these are some of the profiles: single, single physical sheet one side, single physical sheet two side. I talked about why you would have two separate profiles instead of having the checkbox for remove blank pages, uh, because it doesn't always work. Um, and it, it's fine, I guess, if you're not going to use extraction technology to extract the data out of the invoices, but if you are then uh, we, we highly recommend this. Uh, and then you separate your thermals into singles, doubles, and multiples. Uh, those are single single sheets, double sheets, like doubles might be restaurant where there's a POS and the actual receipt, a POS receipt and actual receipt. Scan one receipt per PDF. Do not scan all your receipts into one PDF. Um, again, if you're gonna be using extraction technology, it's looking for a very specific uh, template and form. And if you have like 17 different invoices in one PDF, it's, it's almost, it's really difficult to uh, separate the individual PDFs and then extract the data. If you're simply manually entering all the data, sure, you can do it. But again, then you can't attach those different vendor invoices into QuickBooks Online or any other sort of uh, accounting software application. So this is super important. Um, if, you're, if you're scanning a thermal receipt and you have two pieces of paper, scan the Point, point of sale receipt first. This would be the uh, final payment. Uh, we, we're going to be building some code into our platform to be able to auto detect um, uh, restaurant bills because they're a bit of a problem so we can calculate tips. Uh, we haven't done that yet but it's in, it's in the works. Uh, if an invoice has multiple pages, scan them all into one PDF. Now the profiles take care of that but we just want to be really clear. Make sure they're all in the correct order. If they're not in the correct order, it's just like if you're trying to type it in, it's really hard to type in data if uh, the order is not correct. It's especially important for bank and credit card statements that might have 10 or 11, 12 pages. They all have to be in the correct order. And the other thing too is, is make sure that they're scanned uh, straight. They're not skewed at 45 degrees. Again, it makes it very hard to extract data at a skewed, um, uh, skewed PDF images. <clears throat> if the thermal receipt's more than 14 inches, depress the scan button until it flashes blue to scan long receipts, okay? Um, Safeway receipts, at least in Canada, uh, never scan because the paper's too thin. So we use uh, carrier sheets or a little piece of, uh, looks like a business card, 
and it's a little piece of plastic that flips apart that you can stick the receipt in and feed it in through the scanner. They're called, or you can cut up some carrier sheets, which you can get it in at Office Depot or Staples. Uh, that's what we've done. The edge of the thermal receipt, receipt must not be wrinkled, torn, or crumpled. Otherwise, use the plastic pocket. So we actually have a separate pile of, of crumpled, torn, mangled uh, thermal receipts, and we put each one into a carrier pocket and feed them through one at a time. Uh, always use grayscale at 300 dpi. Here's some maintenance videos. Uh, we'll put these up on our, on our uh, YouTube channel for you to take a look at. If the thermal receipts are too faded, um, you have to keep in mind that the human eye is much better than the scanner at, at uh, recognizing data, whether it's vendor information or line item detail or taxes or total. So simply get a Sharpie and just write in what's in there and then scan it. Um, you're gonna have to hand you're gonna have to hand do that one in the accounting system because it, the, you can't actually extract handwriting very well. But at least something's recorded on the receipt. Uh, if in doubt, hand write on it. Um, okay. Uh, I won't tell you what this means, but that's our own little uh, acronym for no fucking good. Excuse my language. This. Uh, okay. So thermals seem to cause a problem. So here's some of the things that we came up with. Always have similar width piles if possible. Uh, similar, it mitigates the thermals from going sideways and jamming. Sort by condition of receipt. We've sort of gone over that. Scan smaller batches at a time. So the scan snap can take 50, at a, uh, you know, in theory, can take 50 pieces of paper at a time. Maybe only do five to 10 uh, thermal receipts at a time. And then you have to scan the, the damaged ones one at a time. Uh, and you have to use carrier sheets. And so those are our tips and tricks. Um, it's really important to look at the maintenance videos um, because you don't want to have to scan like you know 500 or 600 pieces of paper and all of a sudden your, your scan snaps jamming all the time. So if you do some regular maintenance, um, again we'll put these up on our YouTube channel, um, then that will help make sure that you can be timely with your clients. And hopefully you can get some uh, good information out of this video. Um, we spent about three months and a lot of time and effort going through and trying to figure out the best way to do this. We have some other videos too, like, you know, and a lot of it has to do with training of your clients. So if your clients staple receipts together, that's a huge time suck. Never allow them to use staples. They must always use um, paper clips if they need to do anything at all, or else have them simply throw everything into an envelope and then you sort it later on. <clears throat> and uh, the other thing is you can use uh, applications like bookkeepingautomation.com and intermyinvoice.com to have, um, to bypass the whole paper altogether and we have a different video on that on our YouTube channel is hey you know what if you have uh, the most efficient bookkeeping practice then here's what you need to train your clients to do and here's the software you need to be putting in place to actually go from not scan from scanning paper to actually not having to scan any paper at all all right thank you very much